So just what does coal do to the body? At the climatic facility at the Canadian Defence Research and Development Centre, Dr. Michel Ducharme is running an experiment to look at the effects of hypothermia. OK, Danny, we'll do an initial test, 15 seconds duration, and I'm going to ask you to open and close your hands as fast as possible during that period of time. OK? At the signal, three, two, one, start. This hand-opening experiment is a simple test of manual dexterity. In normal conditions, our subject Danny can open and close his hand over 50 times in 15 seconds. How will the cold affect him? Okay, Danny, we'll start the test now. Get ready. Danny's body temperature is around 37 degrees Celsius, or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The lab is a cool 46 degrees Fahrenheit. Danny's sitting in a 10 mile an hour wind and a downpour. The conditions aren't extreme, but it's enough to lead to hypothermia. What we are trying to simulate here is a worst case scenario and precipitate the reactions to cold. Uh, because when you're in the field, you may develop hypothermia in several hours. Of course, we don't want to uh, impose that kind of pain on our subjects. So that's the reason they are in shorts and, and t-shirts. But the reactions, physiological reactions, will be the same, except that they will be more condensed, more uh, short in time. As soon as the body cools, it kicks into survival mode. Blood flow to the skin is cut off to stop heat loss. The heart rate increases to cope with increased blood volume. Goose pimples, a relic from our hairier days, form to trap heat close to the skin. But none of this is helping Danny. He's getting colder and colder, and so has begun to shiver, making his muscles work in an attempt to generate heat. If Danny's core temperature falls to 35 degrees Celsius, that's 95 degrees Fahrenheit, he is hypothermic. Now, brain function begins to fall. You lose interest in what you're doing. You lose uh, coordination in your speech. And then it will become worse and worse as you progress into the hypothermia. At first, you're going to shiver down to about 32. At that temperature, shivering intensity will decrease and will eventually stop when you reach about 30. Then it becomes dangerous. You will be in and out of being conscious. Eventually, you'll lose consciousness completely. When the shivering stops, the body has given up the fight. Danny's not there yet, but he's not thinking clearly, and the hand-opening test is almost beyond him. If he was in the mountains, just putting on a pair of gloves would be a challenge. Lighting a fire would be impossible. Danny would be dead very soon. It doesn't have to be that cold for hypothermia to set in, but once the mercury falls below freezing, the cold has another trick up its sleeve. Frostbite. And Mike and Matt Couillard were close to feeling its effects. Forced to spend a night on the mountains in sub-zero temperatures, Mike and Matt had built a shelter. As the sun rose, they took stock of their situation. And then, to their great relief, found a better refuge. A small cave big enough for the two of them. It gave enough protection to keep them alive, but not to stave off frostbite. Our feet were fairly numb, and in fact, I'd take almost you know, 20 minutes to put these ski boots back on. Matt's toes were starting to turn white, a classic sign that frostbite was setting in. The white area then starts to feel rather wooden, to touch, it feels perhaps like frozen meat. It's quite unlike normal human flesh. And the more it freezes, the harder it becomes until it is literally frozen solid. If fingers or toes do turn black, do go gangrenous, 
um, then there really isn't a great deal that can be done about that. Thank <laughs> you.